Hey everybody, welcome to Tech Recycle, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant. In this video, we're gonna take a look at five ways to supercharge your meditation sessions using the Muse headband. We're gonna take a look at number one, how to calibrate your device correctly. Number two, different energy centers throughout the body that you can use as a map to navigate your meditation sessions so that you have the best meditation session possible. Number three, we're gonna take a look at the vibration of meditation making sure that we use our meta awareness, meta kindness, and mantras to get on the right vibrational frequency to have amazing meditation sessions. Number four, we're gonna talk about how to elevate your energy through spinal breathing and other pranayama techniques. And number five, we're gonna talk about how to maintain focus on your breath as the meditation object so that beautiful surges of energy called namita come up that you can take into deeper and deeper meditation sessions to have some profound experiences. So let's jump into each one here. I'm really excited. So number one, make sure to calibrate your Muse device correctly. I've talked about this in the past and I actually do have a new ebook on this called Muse Meditation Mastery that really takes you through the steps and the science about how to do this correctly. I want you to try an experiment and when you calibrate with the Muse headband, normally it has you calibrate with your eyes closed, but try calibrating with your eyes open and then going into the meditation session. What you'll notice is that the session will be much easier to get birds and positive points. Ready? Place your attention on your breath now. Now you might see this as a form of cheating the actual device and the app, but really what this is showing you is that the app is setting baselines for you to calibrate at and then giving you feedback in the Muse Meditation app based on how much degree of change in brainwave frequencies there are. And a really good brainwave to take a look at is alpha. We know that alpha goes up significantly when you close your eyes. So when you go from eyes open to eyes closed, you're actually creating a large degree of change in alpha and the meditation app is going to respond to this favorably. Now, ideally you're able to do this during your actual meditation session and we're gonna show you how to do that. But I encourage you to do that experiment and if you're curious, take a look at the Muse Meditation Mastery ebook to find out more about the science behind that. Now what we're gonna show you here are the building blocks behind doing the preparatory work before your meditation session to get the best results. I recommend that you first do the breath work, open up energy centers, and sharpen your awareness with meta and mantra before calibrating. Then, while you're actually calibrating, maintain your focus on higher energy centers like the third eye before settling down into the meditation exercise where you focus on the breath and lower energy centers and wait for Namita. Number two, energy centers. Now learning about the different focus points within the body, traditionally called chakras, was really important for me in order to understand how to navigate through a meditation session. And you really should be opening up these different energy centers before you even get into a meditation session so that you can allow meditative energy called prana to circulate throughout your central nervous system. And really from a neuroscience perspective, what this is doing is turning on different brain circuits within your neurocircuitry so that you have more reserves, more neural tissue engaged in the meditation session so that you can maintain your attention on the meditation object, which evokes deeper and deeper meditation. There's a lot of different resources out there about how to locate these different energy centers. Uh, again, in Muse Meditation Mastery, I talk about how to actually visit each one, locate them, and give them a blessing in order to allow them to open up and you can feel a little bit of an energy pop when they do so, but I encourage you to actually uh, take a look at and research these different energy centers so that you can use them and open them up during the actual meditation session. Number three, vibrational frequencies. What you'll notice when you get into deeper meditation experiences is that little vibrations actually change the entire meditation milieu. You'll actually change, you'll feel a state change when you introduce these different things. And let's say for instance, you've had good prep work and you're focused on the meditation object. If you actually induce loving kindness by uh, feeling bliss and joy or thinking about a loved one, this will actually color the entire meditation experience. It releases more chemicals in your brain that allow you to feel more fulfilled and have more energy to devote to the meditation object. So that can be very important. Another thing that you wanna do is make sure you maintain awareness, meta-awareness, and try to be very present 
with the meditation object. A good term for that is sati, so you're developing your overall awareness of your surroundings. And another thing that you can try is a mantra. Now, the word om is an excellent mantra that you can induce silently within your brain to uh, per permeate your entire meditation experience. That will actually allow you to start resonating with a profound resonant frequency on the earth that actually allows you to get deeper into meditation. And another point that I wanted to make is that when you are visiting those centers throughout your body, like the root chakra or the crown chakra, you can actually silently induce OM into that experience for a couple of seconds. And you'll notice that that vibrational frequency will help open up those meditation centers throughout your body in order to circulate the, the prana so that you can actually have and more in-depth meditation experience. Number four, spinal breathing. This is a Kriya Yoga technique. What you can actually do is start at the base of the spine and move up your awareness as you draw up the breath into the third eye and then exhale and have it go back to the medulla. And doing this three to six times will actually circulate the energy. So before you open up the channels and now you're actually circulating the energy and you should actually feel a large state change from this. And and a good book that I would recommend this on is J.C. Stevens' Kriya Secrets Revealed. He shows how to actually circulate this energy throughout those energy centers. And I really recommend that you actually do this before calibrating and going into the Muse Meditation experience because it will allow you to go deeper into the experience. And number five, you actually use the attention on the breath during the Muse Meditation session. Use the birds and the neurofeedback in order to maintain your attention on the meditation object. And what's gonna happen is that you're going to get these surges of energy called namita that are going to come up. And once you feel that they're strong enough, you can transition your attention from the meditation object to the namita in order to get pulled into very deep and profound meditative experiences. And I actually released a video that I'll put right here in order to uh, take you through that tutorial so that you can do that better. So those are my five main tips in order to supercharge your Muse meditation sessions. I hope that they help and that you're able to further explore the resources that I suggested. Take a look at that Muse Meditation Mastery eBook if you wanna learn more. And this is Dr. Cody Roll with Tech for Psych. Thanks so much for listening. Talk to you again next week.